Okay, this is how I build up the framework for uh, for a picture from a reference photograph. This is printed as uh, on an A4 sheet of paper, and I fit it on the border of my 16 by 12 pad. I draw across the diagonal to get the same proportions, and then draw the vertical frame and then I measure the width of the, uh, the image 27 and the width of the paper 37 and I on the calculator I go 37 divided by 27 1.37, say 1.4, so I just 1.4. So every dimension on the on the drawing is 1.4 on the on the photograph is 1.4 times as big on the paper. So I measure from the border to the right hand side of the the castle, and that's 207. So I put in 207 millimetres times 1.4 and it's 289. So I then measure from my border on the paper to the border on the on the paper and mark off 289. I do that for all the dimensions and I ended up end up with a, a framework and I use this ba basic framework to then hang on my drawing. I rub out most of it. There's the framework. Incidentally, this is my setup. There's my dirty palette, which I'll clean before I start. My rose palette and uh, water bottle. Right, having got the framework, most of everything else is put in by hand, but I usually use my rolling ruler, which is, draws parallel lines to finish off the, the details. Now then. Just drawing sort of very light guidelines for the battlements to get them lined up reasonably well. It's not critical because it's all put in by hand from here on. So, working around, there are three battlements here. So, I just pencil in three battle battlements. It's not critical with this sort of thing, the detail. Now, I shall rub out, use that erasing shield to rub out all the uh, extraneous uh, guidelines and things. So, here we've got uh, two facets on this, this tower, so I just draw a parallel line. And there's one battlement on this side, uh, one battlement on this side. And the top part just pro pro projects slightly from the main line of the tower. Okay. Now I've just seen a mistake, so I'm going to rub this out. There is another tower behind. I'm a stickler for, for detail, so I shall have to. Yeah, put that in otherwise I'll know it's wrong. So this is actually a tower that's behind the other tower and a little higher but it doesn't project very much so that's about it and obviously it overlaps a little bit so it's roughly there. Just rub out a bit of the projecting lines. So there is a tower behind here with battlements Yes. 
Okay, so I'll, so let me put this one back in again now. And this tower only goes down as far as that. So move that up. And there's up there. One battlement there and another one there. And in fact, there is a facet on here. These facets are important for using colour to uh, show the, the sunlight shining more on this face than on this face and of course this face will be in shadow. In fact that vertical line isn't there because that tower runs into the wall. Okay that's how we put it now. There are some windows and so in this particular facet there is a window here and a window here roughly in line and there's a window here. All these little bits of detail uh, do enhance the drawing tremendously. Actually there's a, a light area there, can you see? So somewhere just here there's a probably the, the building behind is demolished and that's the sunlight shining through. So that's it as far as that group of towers is concerned. Now I'll work away all, all the way across the drawing, adding in the detail, measuring where possible, where necessary, putting guidelines in where necessary, but usually drawing the detail by hand. So in the end, although there's a very accurate framework underneath, the drawing does look as if it's hand drawn. Okay, somebody asked about the rolling ruler, which is um, actually made by U Ruler Tech in the UK, but the, it can be obtained in, in the USA too. And it's simply a roller, which enables you to draw parallel lines. I found it invaluable for this kind of work. So that's my rolling ruler, and it's got scale on. It's got angles on, but you never use that. It's too, too inaccurate. Also, this is my uh, ruling pen, which I use for ruling fine lines with watercolour paint. And also uh, for applying masking fluid in lines or uh, just in areas, because it's so easy to clean. That's, a, that's the main thing about it. So easy to clean. You can adjust the thickness of the line with this knob when you're using paint. I just use paint on the end of a brush in there and of course if you're drawing lines you need some sort of ruler and you draw it with the gap facing up and down the line so you draw it that way like that and you make sure that there is no paint on the outside what else this is invaluable this is my sports bottle full of water um, I use it for plein air but I also use it in the in the studio because this is water that doesn't get dirty so you can put a squirt in your palette uh, without any any hint of, in, of contamination. I find that extremely useful. I, I never go anywhere without it. Just a look at the uh, palette. Again, I put it on here. I don't want to get any paint on the paper. This is uh, my palette. And I put a drop of water in the cobalt blue, the ultramarine blue, the light red, the raw sienna, the burnt sienna and the burnt umber because I, I'm unlikely to be using those shortly. Uh, what else? I think we're ready to go. I've, I've finished um, doing the battlements along the top edge of the, the drawing. I don't want to put any more in detail in here until I've got a satisfactory sky. And. Uh, I don't stretch my paper, I just use it as it is because I don't put too much water on. In this case I'll be wetting the sky, I'll be applying masking fluid along the edge of the castle because I want to keep that so it stands out against the background. I'll be applying masking fluid along there with the, with the pen, with the ruling pen, and then I'll bring my sky down to it and I'll wet the surface, all the area of the sky first so that I get an even even wash and I can go on afterwards when it's perfectly dry. So I'll just apply a little bit of masking fluid 
I use Pebio. Um, I found this actually better than better than uh, Windsor and Newton masking fluid. So I use it. I could just use it use it on the edge. I'm not going to try and draw lines with it. So you can see I've got some masking fluid on the outside. I just rub that off with my finger, and and I test it on a piece of paper before I I start. And that's that's fine. So I'm just going to go along the edge of the of the castle just to make sure that it it doesn't get the sky wash. So you can I'm just dragging it along with the ruling pen. That one's going to be black anyway, so I don't need to go into that. So I'm just about run out there. But that's the idea. And of course, if you want to clean it, if it dries up, you can just split it like that. It's what they call a split one. Much more useful than the, the normal, the, old, the solid ones. And clean it up again, put a bit more masking fluid on. Incidentally, I, I, I'm one for getting it off as soon as possible. I don't leave it hanging around on the paper too long. As soon as I've done the sky, I'll whip it off. I don't, I don't uh, like leaving it on for very long because it can sometimes get very difficult to get off. Incidentally, never put masking fluid on damp paper because you can't get it off. It soaks into the paper. See? So that's it. That's how you apply masking fluid. Okay, this is my reference um, photograph which I'm going to use. This has got an overcast sky and the top of the mountain and the top of Snowdon, which is behind here, are hidden by clouds. Um, so I'm going to put an underwash on the sky and I might go into it later when it's absolutely dry with something else. So we'll start by mixing some ultramarine blue. I'm not going to wet the paper just yet because by the time I've got my paints mixed the paper will be dry again because it's it's very dry in my studio. We have a very dry house. So um, I'm just going to mix some ultramarine blue. Quite strong because when you when you apply it to when you apply it to wet paper, of course it's it's watered down. So it's got to be quite strong. I have a piece of paper here to test it on. Yeah, there we are. It's very strong really. I might have to take it down a bit. This is my dirty water, so I'm going to clean my brush out. And I'm going to uh, add a little bit of... Um, permanent rose in it just to warm it up a touch. Okay. There we are. So that's my blue. Okay well yesterday when the camera went kaput I was applying washers to the sky. I uh, mixed uh, some cobalt blue, not, not ultramarine blue, cobalt blue uh, I wet the sky thoroughly down to the line of the uh, masking fluid that I applied around the the outline of the castle and I brought it down over the, this hill uh, and and this hill here which is which is actually Snowden and here's a foreground hill so I didn't I didn't bring it over that one um, I applied them and it looked quite dark and the paper curled something terrible but in fact overnight it's dried flat I brought a cloud shadow over the top of the, the mountain now, so uh, the mountain will disappear into the clouds. I've got more washes to apply to the sky. Now, um, I did find that, that I dropped two spots of um, raw sienna on the white paper here, and I used my proxy brush, which um, which is actually made for cleaning between teeth, and you can buy them in pharmacies in, in, in America in sets of three. 
and it's invaluable because it's quite gentle on the paper so all you have to do is wet it and scrub the paper and, and then dab off the paint. It's, it's the best thing since sliced bread. There's a little bit there, look, I can just dab that off. There's another piece here, look. You can't see it on the webcam, but it's there, <laughs> I can assure you. So there's some on the edge here. I, I can actually, because it's cobalt blue and it's non-staining, I can actually take that back almost to white paper. That's a, a, a good reason to use cobalt blue, by the way. It's not as intense as ultramarine blue, uh, but it is not staining, and uh, you can take it out again. So there you are. While I had um, raw sienna in my palette, I also applied raw sienna on, over the foreground hill, uh, which is going to have some green in it. And uh, also on the sun, sunlit side of all the castle towers, right through the picture, this, this side of each tower is, is in the sun, so I've applied a light wash of raw sienna as a background, and this will make it uh, shine more when I, put, when I apply the texture to the, to the stonework. <clears throat> well, telly ho, we've got to face it eventually. I'm going to uh, apply some very light grey washes to the sky uh, to to uh, enhance the clouds. So I'm, I'm wetting it down. <coughs> it's good to have lights uh, where you can see where you're actually working um, because it's very easy to leave a, leave a, a patch dry because then the, because the paint won't won't go there. Not on its own, anyway. So, um, so we're, we're wetting the sky down ab and the hill above the uh, the line of the castle ramparts, and we're going to let it go off a little before we start applying the sky washes. We don't want to water it down too much, so we let it dry a little bit but not very much. So I've got my round travel brush here, which is a, a pro art travel brush. It's about a number 10, I suppose. And I've mixed uh, here some cobalt blue and some light red, which makes it uh, a decent gray. Here's the gray, very pale. Well, while it's still damp, I'm going to paint the cloud formations that that I can see on the uh, on the reference photograph. basically layers of cloud and while it's down it uh, use the wrong colour there I can lift it off okay. While it's damp, you can oh, you can move it around a little. Now, all the time I'm doing this, the lower half is drying, so I may have to let it dry and then re-wet, re-wet the lower half. it's drying, I would think that we probably need another coat. See the bottom half is virtually dry now, so just here is, is 
still quite dense and can put a bit there. Now, it's drying, so I'm getting sharp edges, and that's not what I want. I want sort of smooth edges. So I'm going to apply a bit of water on the outside of where I've just painted, and let the let the paint run into it. And that'll, that'll get rid of the, the hard edges. Similarly here, a bit of a tide mark here. So I can wet that. Now this portion is already bald. It's virtually dry. And across the top of the mountain. So that's about it. So here we go with a bit more of the grey. Too much of some of the uh, some of the lighter colour shows through because clouds aren't solid. They're uh, they're 3D and the the thickness of the cloud layer changes. It varies. I'm going over the top of Snowden. This is the Mount Mount Snowden, way off in the background, about 10 miles away. have a little bit of anything else. So I need to see a bit of light there. Let's get in there. It's not very clear, I'm sure, on the webcam, but Okay, so that's the, the second layer of, of sky washes. I'll probably go over it again. I just want to make sure that there are no cauliflowers. Cauliflowers is where you put dry paint next to wet, a wet area, and the, the paint is sucked into the wet, wet area, and it forms a tide mark. There's one there, for instance, and all you can do there is, while it's still a little damp, is spread the paint out a little. Okay, we'll, <coughs> we'll let that dry now. Golden rule of this, you know, is, is never go into a sky. Let it dry if, if, if you want to do anything with it. But there we are. I'll turn it round so you can see it. I don't know whether it will come out really clear. But, uh, Composes le comprises layers of grey and raw sienna. Okay, I've made a little bit of progress since last time. I've completed the detail on this side of the of this side of the castle, and I've done a little bit on that side. And I've put a few more bits and pieces into this. Well, I've completed the sketch and put a few cars and one thing in the, in the foreground. I've made a mess of the sky, I'm not happy with it, so I might actually mask the castle off and wash out the sky when I've finished and do it again. I'll see how it goes. Obviously the interest is in the castle and um, when I get the castle and the foreground done it may be that the sky sort of uh, will uh, fade away a little bit. So I'm going to try now 
and put some texture on on this side on the starting to put texture on the camera. I won't show any detail at this because it it's a very low resolution image and that's a digital zoom. Right well I've mixed some colours up prior um, here. Uh, this is um, oops this is uh, raw sienna with a lit little touch of a burnt sienna and it's quite weak and I'll use that to put a wash on the castle wall to start with and then I've got a couple two or three other colours I've got a, a more of a darker uh, a darker burnt sienna colour here and then I've got a one with more burnt umber in here so th those are all three different browns then here I've got a a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber which is a grey colour and uh, that's to put a bit of dirt into the castle walls because it, there is quite a lot uh, showing, a lot of text is showing on the top of the walls uh, where the weather's got at it so I'll be putting that on later but to start with I'll just put do the first couple of facets on the on the castle um, and hopefully that'll give you an idea as to how I'll complete the rest of the castle and, and then I probably won't come back until I start adding more detail okay so I'm going to start now by uh, painting a wash over the castle walls and then adding while it's still damp adding uh, some texture so here we are this is the pale wash I hope it's pale enough I'm just checking yeah it's quite pale so uh, I'll do the first, in fact I'll do right up to there, it's actually it, it's probably not a good idea to do too much at once because it needs to be slightly damp to put the texture on, um, I found, and uh, so anyway, I'll just do that, that particular wall. Right, now this is damp and uh, it's got a hardly a shine on it but it, it is damp so I can now take some of the other colours and I'll get a smaller brush and I can add a, a, just touches of touches of, of texture now down the corners of, uh, of the castle there are some uh, Sort of different stones, slightly darker stones. So I start by putting a few stones all the way down the corner. Okay. Now there's also a band of of this stone along underneath the windows. Right. Okay. Now this stone colour can can go in patches. In fact, round the windows the, the there is a, the, the stone is used to, to frame the window so I'm going to paint around the windows with it that's a bit wide that one, never mind it's very narrow really and there's another one here ok so I'm going to add a, a little bit of texture, not too much, before it dries and I'm only using the point of the brush here uh, and I'm not trying to do it in course, I'm doing horizontal strokes but I'm not trying to to uh, match anything. Now at the top of each cap battlement there is a capstone so I, I paint that in the same colour. Right so I'm just carrying on and put a bit of texture in here. Now before it dries I have to put a, a odd bit of uh, darker texture in. But the ones in the sun, these facets in the sun, my lamp's going up and down here, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the ones in the sun, uh, I don't want to put too much dark in. I'll put the darker uh, flecks of colour in the uh, in the ones in the back, in the shadow. So here we are. The particular facet uh, where I'm painting now is actually in the shade. So although I'm putting a, a little bit of texture on, it will won't show up so much by the time I've finished. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of darker texture here and there, but not 
pretty much. I'm going to put some down this corner and I'm going to put it in the shadow side of, of, of these um, battlements. Because the stone obviously will be darker in the shadow. I'm going to put a few touches down this just to delineate the the corner. It's quite quick actually. Quite quick. I'm just check, <coughs> checking on my previous painting to see how much I put on that because it worked out fine on it. But, well, it's slightly smaller in scale actually, but um, that's about the same. It's about the same. By the time I put um, some dark uh, flex in the shadowed side uh, it'll, it'll be alright ok now what else now can you see how that, that dark there in the, in the battlements has really picked out the battlements it's really good ok and I'll do the same here because this one will be in shadows as well it shows you the thickness of the of the wall and we're looking sort of from the left so um, it, it works okay now <coughs> the whole of this facet is in shadow and and so I need to put a shadow color on I don't know whether this is perhaps too no it's not too dark that's about right I'll get a slightly bigger brush and I'll put a shadow on on this um, this facet of the tower that, that brush is a bit dicky actually Right, faithful Escoda. It's got a better point. This is a, a W. H. Smith 199 brush, which I've had about four years, and there's no point left. However, this is an Escoda, and it's really nice. It's got a really nice point. So I'm going to go up to the facet line, here, up to the edge of the tower. It looks very dark when you go. On, it goes on, but in fact, it'll it'll uh, it'll lighten up as it dries. Okay, can you see that? So there we are. That that that's the portion of the of the tower that's in in shadow. One more thing to do, and that's to put some dark in the windows. They're dry, so I can do it. Uh, now I've got some old blue here. I'll put a little bit of burnt umber in it. I hope it's strong enough. Yeah, it's almost black. Put a bit more burnt umber in it. It's a sort of browny black, but it's quite deep. Don't want too much. It's, I don't want it to spread. So, here's the window going in. Another window. Another window. Oops. Now, that's a bit iffy there. It's a bit iffy that, so I'll, I'll take it out and do it again. That top one's okay. Dab it, and you get a lighter version. <laughs> I'm going to put a bit of water on my brush, and then into the grey. So it's now a paler form of grey. And I'm just going to put a bit of dirty weather stains on the top of the wall. A bit darker. On the top of the wall. If I wet it and then just drag it down a touch, like that, it'll leave a bit of a stain on the on the stonework. I make the top part a little bit darker. Now it's wet. It, yeah. So that's simple as that. I'll leave it at that. Now unfortunately I ran, ran out of disk space uh, when I was doing the other one, so I carried on and uh, painted right along the, to, the, to the castle. Um, adding a lot more dark to the wall, which is the town wall and the entrance to the town. Uh, and then later I added um, 
dark grey weather streaks to, to the top of the wall but I made sure that I left the top of the wall light. I then added the windows in the gable end and uh, a few more details. Well here's the painting framed. It looks a lot better in the frame and mount. This was the painting done from a photo by Bill Damick. And here's the previous painting I did um, uh, from a photograph I took in January when I visited uh, Carnarvon. All my pictures are shown on wetcanvas.com in the watercolour section and my name is Yorkie.